This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Choosing the right pot size for your plant is so much easier than you might think. Hi hey everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video I want to talk about potting size. Now in my last video I spoke to you about plants that are grow without a pot at all. Which clearly means that the size of the pot can't be too important. And sometimes there seems to be the sentiment online that choosing the right potting size is like this really, really tricky science. Well, let me tell you, it's not. Now, in a nutshell, you always want to choose the size of the pot in accordance to the size of the root system. So not the size of the plant or the size of the leaves or the amount of leaves that it has or the size that you want it to become. You assess the root system at the time of potting it up and then you choose a pot that suits the size of the root system. So that's really it in a nutshell. But let's dive a little bit deeper into this topic. Now, I personally, I'm really just using three potting sizes, or at least for the first three years of my plant journey, I was able to get away with just three potting sizes. I use 10 centimeter pots for smaller plants. And just by the way, a little side note, I only potted this up maybe three months ago, uh, three weeks ago. And look at all of the roots that it's already showing. This one is in tree fern fiber. So a little experiment that I'm doing, but more on that in a different video. So this is a 10 centimeter pot. When it outgrows the 10 centimeter pot, I pot it into a 14 centimeter pot, which looks like this. And this 14 centimeter, hey, come on, what do you want to do? Come here, go here. <laughs> and sorry, Brad is asking for a lot of attention today. Now this 14 centimeter pot I also use for my smaller moss piles. So when they're still on 90 centimeter moss piles, I usually just use the 14 centimeter pot again. But let's talk about moss piles in a sec. And then once it outgrows the 14 centimeter pot, I have these 20 centimeter pots. And those 20 centimeter pots are also the pots. Hang on, can you even see me? I'm here. Uh, and those 20 centimeter pots are also the pots I use for my large 180 centimeter moss piles. Now, why have I chosen these three specific pot sizes? They're the only three sizes available in see-through or clear. That's it. There was no science behind it. There was no thought process behind it. Like what's the perfect size for small plant, medium plant, large plant. It's honestly just what's available. So I just buy these three sizes and for the first three years, honestly, all of my plants were able to fit in one of those three. Now, most recently I started using some other pot sizes as well. Just some teeny ones for little seedlings, but I really only needed that once I started having my own seeds and kind of germinating seedlings. So I don't know what size that is, but they're little seedling pots. And, and I can't really reach it, but on my right, my Monstera Thai Constellation is in a 25 centimeter pot. Just because, well, that plant is over three years old now and it's not growing on a moss pole, so there's no vertical extension of the pot. So all of its roots need to be within the pot. Now, I also started using the 25 centimeter pots for moss poles where I maybe have two moss poles in the same pot or where I have two or three plants on one moss pole, which obviously would then also double or triple the root system. So now my kind of range goes from, I don't know, maybe this is like three centimeters all the way till 25 centimeters. But really 90% of my plants fit in one of those three, either 10, 14 or 20 centimeter. So don't overcomplicate it. The size of the pot, in my opinion, is really not important. But what is important is the medium that you fill it with. But before we keep going with the video, let's hear from today's sponsor, Skillshare. To me, 2023 is all about turning my passion for plants into a viable business. Skillshare offers a wide variety of courses that help you build a creative career. From silencing your inner critic, to building your own business, to marketing your own brand. Me, I don't have what it takes to build a whole business, or, or do I? My biggest problem when it comes to actually realizing my dreams is probably my inner critic. I'm a very self-critical person. So I took a class on Skillshare, Creative Confidence, Learn to Overcome the Critical Voice by Lucy Lambrieux. So let's listen to a quick extract from her class. The inner critic is a voice within each of us that criticizes us without mercy. It develops early in our lives and it absorbs the judgments of the people around us, like our parents, teachers and peers. Okay. Relatable. And at the end of the course, Lucy gave us an exercise. First, you will choose one of your worst creations. Don't spend too much time on it. Just pick something 
you are a little bit or a lot of embarrassed about sharing. All right, so without much overthinking, the first thing that popped into my head was this. You know that post that Kim Kardashian did like a while back where she broke the internet? I always wanted to recreate it, but make it planty. And yeah, I mean, the end result just is not what I had in mind. My inner critic is not happy with me putting that photo in that video, but ultimately your inner critic is just a protection mechanism. They're not here to hurt you. They're actually here to protect you. The inner critic fears that I might get hurt or the inner critic fears what people might think of my creation. While protection is good, that inner critic trying to protect me is actually also really stopping me from being creative because I'm, all, I'm constantly worried about how is this going to be perceived by other people? What do people might think and so on. The first 1000 people to use the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you Skillshare for helping me get out of my comfort zone and sponsoring this video. But now back to the video. See me. Now, I think where a lot of this confusion comes from around potting size online is because a lot of people use a medium that does not have enough drainage and aeration. Basically, the problem that people are trying to avoid or that people trying to warn you of is, let's say I take this propagation and it has like a good root system, right? Now, I personally, would take this and I would put it in a 10 centimeter pot because this pot suits the root system. Now, if I don't wanna do repotting within the next two months, and I love repotting, I don't mind it, right? But if I don't wanna do any repotting within the next two months, I can totally also go into a 14 centimeter pot. You can see like the pot is decently large in like the pot is large enough for the root system to expand over the next half a year or year or so. Um, and then eventually I can move it up into the larger pot. If I keep it in that smaller pot, and sometimes I do that because, well, I wanna put it in my Ikea cabinet and I don't have that much room. Um, if I keep it in that smaller pot, then I just need to, uh, I just need to be willing to do a repot, um, you know, a little bit sooner. It probably is gonna outgrow this pot within two to three months, but we're talking about root being root bound in a second as well. Now, what people warn you on the internet when they say, you know, you got a uh, size up by two centimeters or something like that, is basically what they're trying to avoid is that you take a cutting with this sort of root system, you pop it in a really large pot, and then you fill it with a whole lot of potting mix. Now, if your potting mix does not have enough aeration and drainage, it's gonna retain a lot of moisture, but there just aren't really that many roots to absorb the moisture, and there's not that much plant to actually use the moisture. So if you're having a really large pot and you're sticking to, let's say, like a weekly watering frequency, chances are that the medium never really gets a chance to dry out a little bit. It has higher chances of becoming waterlogged because there's just nothing to absorb all of that water. But if you have a mix that's really well draining and aerated, the mix isn't really gonna retain that much moisture. So the concern is kind of void, if that makes sense. Basically, what you're trying to avoid is having a tiny plant with a tiny root system in a huge pot that retains way too much moisture. The top bit that the plant is actually sitting in is gonna dry out, but the bottom bit is never gonna dry out because there's no roots. You keep watering and eventually you're gonna build the perfect breeding ground for bacteria to cause root rot eventually. Now I think that's really what people have in mind when they're talking about choosing the right potting size. Um, but to me, it's more a thing of choosing the right potting medium for the size pot that you've chosen. But there's a consideration I want you to kind of be aware of. If I would choose this cutting in this pot, I would make sure that my mix has more water retention because it's gonna dry out really, really quickly. If I put this cutting in this pot, I would just choose a potting mix that is more aerated and draining and has less water retention. So I could make this plant work in any of these three pots. The potting size doesn't matter. I would just adjust the potting mix in my watering routine accordingly. And because they're see-through, I can see when the plant needs water. I can see when the plant has healthy roots. Have a look at this. I can see that, I mean, this was watered yesterday. I can see the medium is really dark and has a lot of water in it. And I can see all of these roots on the side and they look happy, healthy, no root rot issues over there. So I know it's all good. Over here, I started this experiment just three weeks ago and I can already see roots coming out, uh, like or going towards the outside of the pot. 
which means, yes, this experiment is working. So I can keep going and start potting a few more plants into tree fern fiber. So these see through pots kind of avoid having this guessing game. And that's why I choose these uh, see through pots. And because they come in these three sizes, that's just kind of like what I try to make work for me. The most annoying thing is like not knowing what's wrong with your plant. You take it out of its pot to assess its root. The roots were perfectly healthy, but you just kind of disturbed the roots. So you caused even more stress for the plant while you were trying to fix it. And these see-through pots just completely avoid that. Now, we cannot talk about the size of the pot without at least touching on moss poles a little bit. Now, it sounds like a broken record, but I keep saying the moss pole is a vertical extension of your pot. It is a pot just shaped a little differently and we flip it uh, vertically but essentially it's still a potting medium or like it's a vessel for potting medium. So when people talk about the size of the pot, keep in mind that if you give your plant a moss pole, the moss pole or like whatever medium you fill your pole with is also considered part of the potting volume. So, sorry, had a quick issue with the camera, but we're back. So I was just saying that I get away with uh, using a small pot, so using as little surface area as possible with this plant because I gave it a vertical extension of the pot. Alrighty guys, my default setup or like the most common setup I have is really these 100, I hope you can see that, 180 centimeter moss pot in a 20 centimeter pot. And this pot is not even full of roots, like there's room, right? Most of the root system, as you can see, is within or around the moss pot. This moss pole, and if my maths is correct, but it could be wrong, it's 180 centimeter tall and about six centimeters in diameter, which I believe is almost doubling the volume of the actual potting medium. So while you think it's a 20 centimeter pot, it's actually not. Huh? It's like I have another 20 centimeter pot, but extended vertically on top of that 20 centimeter pot. So always keep that in mind. Now, I had like a full-on plan for this video and then when I, as soon as I start recording I get so passionate about it I just like ah want to say everything at the same time. So let's have a quick recap. When it comes to choosing the right pot for your plant consider the size of the root system and also consider your willingness to water. If you give it a smaller pot it will dry out quicker and you might need to water more frequently. If you have a larger pot you need to water less frequently because the medium can retain more moisture but you're also more likely to cause root rot through overwatering. Ultimately, do not overthink it, but make sure that the pot size is proportional to the size of the root system. I personally like to keep them quite small. I also am not worried about being root bound because I provide my plants with a liquid nutrient with every watering or at least once a week with my watering. I use GT foliage focus and more information in the description. It's a liquid plant nutrient that has all 12 essential minerals and is readily absorbed by the plant. So as soon as I water with the GT foliage focus, the roots can absorb these nutrients. So I don't need a whole lot of medium to provide my plants with nutrients and retain the nutrients. I provided on a weekly basis. That's how I can get away with my plants being quite root bound but still thriving and pushing out nice large leaves because they're not actually starving. So consider these three things when choosing a pot. First of all what's the size of the root system? Second of all what's your willingness to water or can you adjust your potting mix accordingly or like really what is your potting mix in the first place? And then third of all, how are you going to provide the plant with nutrients? Are you potentially worried about being root bound? A large healthy root system will make a large healthy plant. Roots are key to the plant's success. These leaves are only going to come if there are healthy roots. And if there are healthy roots, more nice leaves will come. So it's definitely important to look after the health of your roots. But I think making a crazy science out of choosing the exact size of your pot Mm, might be a little too much effort on the wrong thing. But of course, I can only ever talk from my experience and well, I suppose I'm surrounded by plants that are thriving in any of these three potting sizes. So surely it can't be all too important. Anyway, this was more chaotic than I was planning for it to be. I wanted it to be a little bit more 
streamlined, but I suppose we're used to it by now. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for watching and if you haven't watched part one where I show you how I grew a plant without a pot at all, I'll link that at the end screen. Thank you so much for watching, like, subscribe and leave a nice comment and I'll see you next week. Bye!